Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning. Very good morning, everybody. I trust uh, that you all are fine. Let me turn off this music. Uh, I'm going to. Yeah. Okay, so welcome everybody. Maybe you can turn on the door. Thank you. This course that uh, we have is very reflective and very contemplative course. It is about you, the knower. And in the last presentation, I gave a brief outline that any global environmental changes so that we are going to talk and we have been talking in EDS 360 course. We need to internalize that some way and also we need to find our own re reflection, our own creativity about knowing, about feeling, and about doing. So today, before we start the group work, we continue from last time. Since we need to rearrange this uh, chair, I will give you a brief introduction what we are going to talk about that those transformative quality that we were talking last time. Uh, in the last lecture, we also said that, can we be healthy in a very sick earth? It's very difficult, right? Have we asked that question before? Can we be healthy in a sick earth? And we have to use our own awareness that we talked quite a lot about that last time. Today, we give you a little bit insight about connection as a transformative quality to address all these anthropogenic influences that we are seeing, we are knowing cognitively, but may not have felt it because our connection to nature is really, we know only using the cognitive faculty here, but not the effective or the effective faculty and so on. We have also said that nature is co-modified as like a commodity very heavily, which was a mistake of the intellect in, in, in last century. Also, human being is separate from the nature. We are the one who, who are dominant and we know what is best. That was also a mistake of the intellect, according to my reflection, okay? You can have your own reflection also. Well, we can see that art is what we all have in common. The world leaders, long before, in fact, at the United Nations and so on, giving this idea that our foot is stuck on the accelerator and we are heading toward an abyss. The world has no position to face major new shocks and so on. 
they talk about that, of course. But when they go, and I also go into a big international conference or my official mission, I talk about that in the classroom or conference or to people. And I go back to my five-star hotel, take bath twice, you know, using a lot of water in a country where there is a big water scarcity. What I'm preaching and what I'm doing are not two different, and are do, uh, two different things, isn't it? So let's understand our connection as a transformative quality in individual that emphasize the awareness of independence, interdependence, radical interdependence between human and earth system and its resources, land, water, air, and many things that we talk in this course. Recognizing this connection is essential for addressing and mitigating anthropogenic influences that impact the environment that we talk like anything last time, okay? It also affects our overall planet well-being and understanding of our real connection, not only using our head, but also our heart in a very holistic way. This will be a responsible approach to environmental stewardship. In this EDS 260 that we will be talking, we talk quite a lot about global health and environmental change. And there we'll be talking around and about this thing, you know, about this immediate problem like water pollution, air pollution, soil contamination, how that is affecting our really ourselves, our visceral organs, and our life in a very profound way. In the last lecture, to recap, to tell about our connection, a contemplative way of knowing our connection with the, with the trees, for example, the environment out there, the forest, beyond the perception of a silviculturist, we can say that the environment is in us. Air and water are our circulation. It's not outside us, okay? The tree are, are our lungs and rivers are our blood stream. They are our circulation. <clears throat> we are all interconnected and what you do to environment, ultimately you do to ourself. How much internalized this idea in our own life what we have done in science so far is that yes, environment, whatever is there is because of anthropogenic influences, what happens in our social system, our political system and decision making and many things. And of course, the consumer serenity, doing business to make a profit and all the Chicago school of thinking, you know, create the scarcity and demand, and then cultivate that kind of, you know, inner greed or inner kind of lack of fulfillment, and then you can sell your goods and services. But these all are connected ultimately to our environment. <clears throat> In the last lecture, we also talked quite a bit about these things that you are also taking it about, we talk a little more about land use and changes in the coming lectures, how we are connected to that one, direct exploitation of different organisms in the biosphere, what is happening to the climate change, all this problematic relationship to Earth in very many different lectures, <clears throat> very many professor will be coming here and talking around and about it, you know, about the key driver of declining in nature, the pervasive human driven decline in life on the earth. And I have also 
<clears throat> those who want to write any kind of thing, those groups or something, I have posted uh, that that paper in in there. But we are here in this course to cultivate some transformative thinking, to improve the relationship to Earth, our connection to Earth, and different subsystem of Earth, different spheres. Do you remember those spheres last time? In EDS 260, all this hydrosphere, biosphere, pedosphere, right? Water bodies and many things kind of things. And in this planet, in the biosphere, of course, indigenous people live there. They have learned to how to co-create each other with the nature for long, 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 long ago. And this colonial power, when they arrived in many countries around the world, without examining that indigenous knowledge, their vocabulary, their language, their way of knowing, they wiped out and then introduced so-called a kind of university kind of other kind of education that they feel a little bit alienated. So we have to rediscover now what is the contribution of indigenous people and local communities for preserving our environment. Understanding personal and collective benefits. Today, <clears throat> just by philosophy, people not do the thing. There should be some kind of, you as a young scientist, do some benefit finding and we, We'll talk a little greater detail when we're talking about connection, okay? Now all this reciprocity of exchange, give and take kind of relationship, and what, <clears throat> all the way to, you know, what this youngster have to say. And also we talk a little bit about the spiritual ecology today in this lecture. So far, so good? Spiritual, don't get, don't get afraid with it, right? There are many, many, many published work and in the University of Hawaii, there is a master program in spiritual ecology. So that is not, I mean, just to talk about, oh, you know, what Brahma did or what Jesus did, or something. it's not that. Feel that one, if there is some insight, which we'll talk in greater detail in the next lecture. Also listen to the elder to get some kind of insight about the connection. Remember that all these five transformative qualities that we talked in the last time, they all are overlapping and connected, okay? One of the elders in the Australia's indigenous leaders say that we are only here for a short time. We are a visitor really, or do not belong to us like a visitor, you know. We have all this air, water that I was talking, we have borrowed. We have to give it back. Dust we come from and the dust we return to, okay? So also get some insight from there when you are making your individual assignments and the group assignment. In the paper that I am focusing, because I have to have some kind of framework or published work about connection, we talk, this concept here includes compassion. Have you studied compassion in a scholarly way? We never teach it, right? What is compassion? What, what it means? But because that human quality which is overshadowed, the humanity is suffering today at all level. We'll talk about that, okay? kindness, generosity, and so on and so forth. And the same group of Christine Wamsler, who have a, a course, a master program in University of Lund, the same group have also, they talk about the sustain SDG is not enough. And we know already that, you know, only this six, seven years, seven years down the line, Many things have not been realized. Most of them are not realized in many countries around the world. 
because this we lack that understanding that it is a problem of relationship, the connectivity, the radical interdependence, and they have developed something called inner development goal. Uh, and then you should also read around and about it. And I'll be very happy if some of you will bring that one in your assignments. In that inner development goals, this connection part that we are the Christina Wamsela talking, they, they bring it even more kind of friendly or relating, caring for others. That was the appreciation, the connectedness, you know. We need, <clears throat> we have, when we feel connection, we care for each other and the nature and so on. The quality of humility, most importantly, empathy and compassion. Can you yourself very honestly just look at this one and see, you know, the inclusion of nature in self. Encircle yourself just very honestly. You don't need to tell me now. Which best describe your interconnectedness with the nature? I can say that for me, I am just, just, just here, or, or even there. Okay, to be very honest, because I preach one thing and do another thing, as like all other people are doing, all the professionals are doing, very honestly. <clears throat> so this connection again. So compassion, you see, there are, if you write compassion in the Google Scholar and so on, there's, you can find several studies done in a very many different context. Just to tell you that what is compassion is a, a kind of your feeling, <clears throat> your effective aspect in psychology that arises in witnessing the other suffering, suffering of others. When the wildlife, you know, when there is a forest fire, when they are suffering, when you feel the suffering of those and those other human beings. In uh, Libya, just recently, you know, what happened? More than almost 6,000 people have died. There is a big outcry going on. Then naturally, feel to do something toward them. If you don't need to think twice to, to, to send some kind of help to them. So that is the compassion, being moved by other suffering and wanting to help. Feeling sorrow or concern for other along with a desire to alleviate their suffering. It's not to say, oh, poor, I'm concerned. That's not enough, really. I'm concerned for environment. That is not really. If you do something in action, that is compassion, OK? So when it comes to your engagement, you can also put where, where you are. You just feel pity. That means I just know about your suffering or I care about your suffering, that is sympathy. And I feel about your suffering, that is empathy. And I really want in action to relieve your suffering and where the level of engagement go up and up. In very many situations, you know, I have seen this in many countries. What should be the case here? You know, many people are just using the facility, right? Not thinking about this metaphorically. So recognizing the suffering, understanding the universality that it's not only them. I will also suffer. Suffering is a fact of existence. You know, and also have a consideration for persons suffering, tolerate uncomfortable feeling. You also need to be resilient. So here comes a psychological resilience that you need to have and also be motivated to take action. And such thing has been talked by very many spiritual master like, and also spiritually motivated people like Mother Teresa, who spent 43 years of her life in Calcutta and also 
Dalai Lama is holiness the Dalai Lama who was a refugee, you know, from Tibet. He talks about the compassion and so on. And therefore, we need to bring spirituality and religion together. And this is my model. This is where it's my creativity. You can create something like that in your own way. <clears throat> I have been teach I will be teaching this all the connectivity of this big global environmental issue, which is in the left side, land degradation, climate change, they themselves are connected also. Scientists, before they were just studying them in isolation, but now the science is coming. And other people who are talking about human well-being, stress, and this and that, they were just not even communicating with we, like agriculture scientists, soil scientists, and so on, and also environmental scientists. And those people were also preaching and talking about that one. The time has come today to create this connection and better understanding and make an integrated solution about the global environmental change. Do you think it makes sense to you? This is how I, I, I think. In future, my education, my research are more focused on this. <clears throat> we are doing this kind of idea. And compassion is not a kind of just a, a goody goody word. If you really cultivate compassion, even deadly animal become your friends. Do you agree with me? Yes? Yes, information. You look look at this. This monkey in Thailand. <clears throat> they have developed so much of compassion with the tigers and so on and taking care of them. And of course, they are monk and so on. But even the wildlife biology in South Africa, it is possible. It's a metaphor, OK? These are metaphors. Of course, you will not be going to I mean, kiss the tiger now. But it is possible, theoretically, if you unleash your human potential of compassion. Even I know how much selfish we are here, ourselves. We educated people. Look at the indigenous people of India. You know, this deer become an orphan, and she knew it from the very beginning. And this is also another kind of visual metaphor here. <clears throat> because she was telling that I breastfed deer because they are like my own children. When the, the, the this become an orphan, she was making her breastfeeding. Another thing. We, we talk about we versus them. You know, animal is different like this deer is different from us. But have you studied the molecular biology a little bit? You know, look at the DNA. Do you agree with me that DNA is the building block of our life? Right? We all have DNA. So how much is the... How much do you think is a difference in DNA between myself and a chimpanzee or animal? What is What will be your answer? Can you guess anybody? Yes, sir. I'm asking the, the gentleman backside. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, okay, you. Yeah. Wonderful. You are very, very smart. That is the answer. Only one to two percent difference. And how much difference is between you and me? Point one percent, okay? Point one percent only and less. And therefore, all the people around the world, we have the same genetic, even building block and so on. All these people. And this is what is, you know, the difference between the two human beings, only 0.1% difference. Read about it, okay? This slide I have borrowed from a molecular professor in molecular biologist from University of Oslo. So we all are the part of same continuum. 
as a scientist, as a professor, we have to work, you know, work internationally. And this is the photo we became very popular in NORAD and other places. They also use, you know, when I was working in the Afar region of Ethiopia, this little girl, she was below 15. She was carrying water in the back, almost 10 liters of water every day from five kilometers away and she has to, this is the source of the water. And when I collected these photos and also talked to the community there, as you can see, I'm here, somewhere you can find it, you see in Ethiopia. And then we negotiated with the donor a little bit, and then we scale up a little bit of water harvesting, uh, small scale water harvesting, harvesting structure. So compassion help people even the donor, you know. Do you remember that, that photo of that little boy in the beach uh, in a, who, who were a, fleeing from Syria? Before that, you know, every head of the state government were a bit reluctant to accept those refugees from. But when they saw that photo, it becomes very popular then very many were willing to accept more and more refugee. Because compassion is our innate quality. And if I have not experienced the compassion of my mother, I would not have survived. Other one, this book, I think you should be reading sometime in your life, written by Karen Abraham, one of my guru, I showed you the photo last time. Okay, the quantum social change. A lot can be said about it. But we are, you know, we are entangled in very many different ways through language, through culture, through civilization, through genetic history and so on and so forth. And this quantum social change, this entanglement, of course, in the quantum physics, when two particles can be linked together in such a way that they share the same path meaning that since we are genetically so connected, if the people suffer in Libya, deep inside we are also suffering. Why for no reason, despite the fact that we have so much of affluence, we also feel headache sometimes, this and that, because others are suffering around the world, okay? So all this hockey stick curve, you know, which we have been talking about it, all these things is not a problem. This is a shared suffering. This is another picture of shared suffering. And therefore, I think in practical way, in agriculture, in forestry, let's find that true connection to nature to solve about global crisis in agriculture, global crisis in water and so on. Look at this agriculture, my reflection, you know. What are the options in agriculture that is climate positive, connects people and nature, and contributes to our health and well-being? Not only a kind of object of producing grain, not only a kind of physical food that comes. I have been looking at and talking to very many people around the world. And this is, again, my reflection. You have to make your own reflection. The wisdom-based agriculture is coming very profoundly in very many different names, but it has not been scaled up, you know? But that contributes to our well-being, our psychological resilience, and also our personal transformation. And it connects our human, our being to the, to the nature, and we are the part of the same continuum. Okay, this agriculture, wisdom-based agriculture is a context-responsive, low input, sustainable agriculture for the well-being of a greater society from a strong cultural and wisdom based. We are having one project in Croatia around and about it. There are very many different names that you can, but these are just emerging kind of name by NGOs and so on. We need to really go into a greater detail so that we can be better connected with agriculture and so on. 
So there is also, you see, the Institute for Mindful Agriculture. There is here and there. What kind of agriculture grow nature and health and society together? Here, we what we need is that instead of just measuring yield per hectare yield, if we also see this intangible benefit. Remember, I told you about the benefit findings. What are the only, what are the intangible benefit as well? that you cannot measure it directly in the given level of science, but we can measure it in some way. Okay, that is very many different name, Vaidik Krishi, Rishi Krishi, in, in different yogic agriculture, I, I give you the example of that one. So oh, another thing is that indigenous knowledge, this is also is very, because it has been marginalized to very many colonial powers and so on in the curricula, in the curricula in so-called developing country, where the, all the rural poor are some kind of indigenous people here and there, but I don't see, I only see the definition of agronomy, soil, soil types made by, uh, I mean, uh, by Americans and Canadians and, and European and so on. Okay, but this is also coming into the science in the project in Malawi. We are also giving emphasis to that. He's a professor who give a very big emphasis to that one. And also some publications are coming out of that one. Look, when we talk about the, you know, using this climate data in developing country, we use an original model because the data is not calibrated. The data are not available to those resolution like in Norway. And this gives a regional prediction. And that is not accurate. But what this professor was saying that Indigenous people used to see the, how this, you know, in, in, in the other, other, other photo there, there is a, a nest of the bird. You see that little gray thing on the tree. Because the way in the direction that bird was uh, creating that nest, that year, based on that, they would know that this year, how the rain is coming and who, where from where the rain in from which direction the rain will be coming and so on. Well, some NGO like Swedish NGO and so on, they were also popularizing the farmings in God way, bringing, I said, we have to also bring some spirituality, you know. It is a type of conservation agriculture and that reinterprets the conservation agriculture principle of no tillage, mulching, and crop rotation using biblical metaphors such as God doesn't plow, you know, zero tillage, God blankets, and the Garden of Eden kind of thing. You know, if you don't know how was the Garden of Eden, how was you look at the Genesis in your Bible. I'm not Christian, but I read Bible, Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, for example, how it is mentioned that what was there in the garden of Eden, how, how it was created before the, 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 in that metaphor, the God brought to the human being and, and so on. And these farmers, which are not foolish, they live there. Every operation they do, they also bring their ancestor in their prayer, in the land preparation, in the watering and so on. They bring and get also kind of idea from those knowledge that has been transmitted from generation to generation to generation. We have to rediscover that, which becomes context responsive. Today's university kind of, you know, in this country, what I have seen is a very context deficit kind of curricula. Okay, so this prayer and so on, but there are also, you know, in the, 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 there are, this is published work, there are also problem with that one, like in that way, there are also a study that there will be a more burden on the female uh, to work and there is a labor issue there. So we have to find a balance there, okay? It is not, I'm not telling that, oh, it's goody, 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 goody. Just go and run for it. No, we have to look at the science also and find the middle path there. And also value the intangible value. How can, how that prayers, also cultivate your psychological resilience in life. 
Okay, that's my point here. I myself is very fond of nature and I also look at what kind of intangible benefit, benefit finding. Only when you popularize the benefit finding, then the community and people will be interested to take care of nature. Okay? How to conserve the water bodies? The sound, you do you know that this primordial sound? Your body is new because you are born, you know, after I came to Norway, long after I came to Norway in 1987. But your at least your mind can be old and it can recognize those. Your ancestor, you have a genetic imprints of that one in the form of epigenetics and so on. It will memorize those primordial sound that gives you a soothing effect. And many, many kind of studies now are available about how nature heals. No more publication. Okay, I also do in this when I was projecting. I used to go to this place every weekend when I was going there in the official vision. And also this, this is this water is a bit deep down there. We'll see how clear and clean, even to look at that one. See, so these Bosnian are very lucky. They go there. Also plant have a therapeutic effects. Like when I was doing my sabbatical, you know, you know, part of my sabbatical also went to the Ohio State University. Any American here? No American? Oh, good, good. So you, you know that if you have been to this campus, if, if you have been to Ohio, there's a horticultural therapy garden. Look at in the net, you are more, more smarter than me. Even the forest bathing or forest therapy, look at in the net, you know, how forest heal us. That is what is the benefit finding. And the scientists also, this biophilia theory suggests that there are evolutionary theory, why people seek out nature experiences, okay? Even to look at those kind of film, those kind of, you know, uh, videos about how, uh, you know, the nature is really doing is much better than those rock, you know, the rock music. You know what is rock music? Can I sing one thing for you? I have heard when I was a little boy one, and I didn't know what it means, but what? Like that. <laughs> but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy because there's a multiple benefit finding. So farming activities, okay, in agriculture, it's not only just to produce the physical food, but also range of additional benefit, okay? And I know that one because I come from the Indian subcontinent from Nepal. We have also very many crop festivals, you know, all these are different names. And they, you know, celebrate and rejoice the different rhythm of crop cycles and also bring that one to the food culture together and collectively, they enjoy these different types of thing. And that, I think, because of those celebrations and so on, despite the fact that physically, materially, these farmers are poor, but their well-being is good. Okay, they don't have this, so many kind of, you know, this kind of thing. So many things, we can have a whole lecture about it. So the farm, for me, I'm a son of farmer, where the most memories are made. And I thoroughly enjoy this is also a gonna put in. Even you know, we are we enjoy aesthetics and supra aesthetic value in life. That contributes to our well-being. Okay. And even there are studies that females are more sensitive to capture the aesthetic cues than men. We are a little bit dumb. Female can get aesthetics, and that's why they are they take care of their makeup, I think, in a greater detail and so on. But in farming, you know, when I see this kind of thing, you know, look at the color of the vegetable and how it's organized. It itself is a kind of, you know, you don't need to go for a, you know, the, the, the color therapist. You can enjoy that one, okay? I have seen that one in India. 
Finally, <clears throat> also agriculture, as I said, this is a project that we have in, in Croatia. Horses use, I have seen that they are trying to revive because there is a lot of oil. Oil is, has become very expensive after the Ukraine war and so on. So they are really trying to promote something called low input, wisdom-based agriculture and so on. And they use this and also for seeding and so on. But horse is a living entity. It's not a machine like tractor. You know that one, this horse, there's equine, equine assisted therapy. You know, these farmers are also using that one for that one. Not only plowing the land, and there is a multiple benefit finding again. And India is emerging, and some publication has taken place from the university there. They call it yogic agriculture, where they have published this work from the United Kingdom, and you can you may read it yourself. But here, farmers are trained to do meditation and give that intention, you know, intention create reality. The power of intention that you should read today, okay? Power of intention. And then they see a better crop, even starting from the germination with and without that kind of meditation, also with and without that kind of the subtle entanglement is created at a quantum level. And then, you know, based on the mode of your intentionality, you create that entanglement and that, that brings the reality, okay? Otherwise, everything is a non-local wave of possibility in quantum physics. Even plant, look at the plant about this book is very, very welcome, sir. Is he smiling? Incredible journey of plant and there, Plant is not a dead thing. You, you read about yourself in Wikipedia, I found what is plant cognition. They can cognize very many things, also plant perception and so on. So benefit finding. In the compassion I said, but there are a number of studies with that shows that the compassion giver get more benefit than compassion receiver, okay? These also you can read it yourself. So finally, humanity has to learn how to decrease our wants. That is the problem. So also being mindful of connection between our desire and also the connection between that desire to the ecological devastation is essential for promoting sustainability and developing also stewardships. Remember that the for our, in evolutionary history, we are just nothing. I mean, we are no more important for than any insect or cockroach or anything for the nature, okay? And it will not in a bigger time scale, Earth will heal. The planet is not in jeopardy. We are. We haven't got power to destroy the planet or to save it. But we might have to have the power to save ourselves. So with this, I stop my thing, okay? You take five minute break and you reorganize your five, 10 minute break and you can reorganize your chair and table. The group is the same. And first five, 10 minutes when you are together, you make your strategy that how you'll organize your group presentation because that is a mandatory part of your assignment toward the end what issue you would like to address together and how you on, uh, how you organize your group presentation. And then another thing is that I have posted you those we have not, we don't know or what to reflect on or what to, there is individual assignment, which is also a mandatory, which is not very heavy. You have to, you can use your free will and something to bring any kind of creativity it's nothing wrong or right, but that is your knower perspective. And then I have uploaded from my side the relevant questions. You can attend to those, or if you want to change it, if you want to make it a different, just inform me, and that's fine with me, okay? And because it, it comes to uh, it comes to this one yesterday. 
I will give you from my side between you and me, don't tell other until the end of this weekend. And if you find a, another topic which you wanted to address within the framework of the course, then you can just tell me and you work on that, but the conditions are the same, which is given in the instruction. Yes. Uh, when are we having the presentations? Your, your group presentation is last two lecture, which is planned, okay, which is there, I, I will, which is also there in that, uh, that will be end of November. I'll give you the date, but the individual presentation is that you don't have to present it. You just have to submit it in your folder. And that is myself and the external will look at it, but everybody who submit it is fine. And it is not, as I say, it's very, very, you use your own. You see all this example, what I'm giving you is my own like that. Okay. It's not, it's just, you know, I've been compiling here and there, photo, visual, and my experience. And you can also do the same. Thank you very much. Let's take 10 minute break and you reorganize. Yes, please. 7th of December. But group assignment, you know, your group, uh, group presentation will be just starting from group one, two, three, four, maybe four group we can cover in one and another four group in the next lecture. So that will be before that. Thank you.